I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. 2022 Porsche Cayenne. E-hybrid coupe that you guys helped me spec on Instagram. Follow us at the Stray Pipes at Yuri Tereshin with Performance Start. Smooth. And it sounded really cool. Yeah. Horsepower and torque. 455 horsepower, 516 pound feet of torque from a three liter turbo V6 plug in hybrid. So, back to the start, what do you mean we spec this out? Okay, so Porsche gave us the opportunity to actually spec out a press car and they built it, so now we're driving it. Yeah, because we've been bugging all manufacturers to let us spec it out because sometimes manufacturers have not the coolest press cars, but Porsche has been usually pretty good. Yeah, so what happened was a couple months ago, we suggested doing it through Instagram. So if you follow us there, you could have been part of this where I had a spec, Yuri had a spec, and then we made all of our Instagram followers vote on the spec. You guys thankfully voted for my spec and Porsche now built it. Yeah, I mean, I think my spec was cooler with the more like white body match cladding and the color match wheels, but this one does have some really amazing features. And part of why they wanted us to spec out a press car is they actually wanted to use this as an opportunity to show what they have in the Porsche exclusive manufacturer catalog because there are so many options, it's crazy. And this is not an ad for Porsche exclusive manufacturer. This isn't an ad for Porsche or anyone. None of it. <laughs> I would honestly be happier if you just went to tsp.truecar.com in the top right corner and saw some pre-built Porsches right there. But it was really cool to do, and we've never actually been able to order a new car, so it was cool to actually go through the entire process, the actual unveiling, as if we bought the car, but we didn't buy the car. Yeah, so we showed up to Porsche Center Oakville, and they pulled the whole tarp off, gave us the whole walk around. It did feel like pretty impressive, like if I bought that, that's the kind of thing that I would want to happen. Yeah. So I'm just gonna list all the options that I got on this car, and then we're gonna get into the details of it after. But the main goal for us was to make it cost as much money as possible because we thought it would be funny. And my personal goal was to add as much carbon fiber as possible. Okay, so let's get into the options. Number one, Carmine Red. I did actually pick orange, but this was originally a 21 model year, but it got switched to a 22 and they removed orange, so now it's Carmine Red. Yeah, we wanted to do the crazy green colors and stuff, but they're like, this needs to be sold after, and that's kind of saved for people customizing a car that they are buying themselves. Yeah, so we used Porsche's money, so, you know, there was a little bit of limitations to what we could do. Apparently, people don't just buy green cars with green wheels off the showroom floor. So to continue on with the list, rear axle steering, sport exhaust system, adaptive air suspension, Porsche dynamic chassis control, Porsche crest embossed on the headrest, illuminated carbon fiber door sill guards, tinted LED taillights, wireless charger, onboard AC charger, carbon fiber floor mats, owner's manual cover in carbon fiber, painted key with leather key pouch, premium plus package in black, which was also available in carbon fiber, which is the second most expensive option that I could have gotten for $25,000. But the most important option that both of us had to have in our spec were these houndstooth seats. Yeah, these seats, I would highly recommend to anyone specking one of these out. These seats are lovely, they're very comfortable, and they just look so cool. Yeah, yeah, like uh, Ricky's shirt from Trailer Park Boys. Pretty much exactly. I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so then why did we go e-hybrid instead of Turbo S? Uh, Porsche didn't give us the opportunity to spend that much money. Yeah. So, <laughs> this is why I spec'd it out like this. I basically made this into my own kind of Turbo S because I have a carbon fiber roof. Yes, ridiculous. Do you regret it? No. Do you not want like a sunroof? Because I love sunroofs way more. I don't like sunroofs and now I have an Alcantara headliner and I actually have even more headroom. I love this. Okay, what's next? Uh, I also have the lightweight package with these large 22 inch wheels. They look amazing. Okay, they look good, but not as good as color matched. Color match is definitely cool, but these are kind of cooler. I did see a Cayenne driving by in my neighborhood with color match wheels. And then I ran into the person at the stoplight and I honked at them like, hey, hey. And they're like, what, what? I'm like, I love your color match wheels. They're like, oh, thank you. It was chalk on chalk. Okay. And then I obviously kept the acid green calipers. They look amazing on this. Really, really good. And one of the options that I'm most proud of other than the carbon fiber roof is the sport exhaust on a hybrid because it actually sounds really good. Yeah. And then you get some like burbles here and there. Like it's, isn't this supposed to be a, a hybrid-y? Cause this is a plug-in hybrid. And you get a green plate, but let's take a listen to the outside. <laughs> And the tone of it actually sounds really good. And since it's a green plate, you can drive in the HOV lane. Like 
it's really cool to have the best of both worlds in this because you can drive on full electric. So I'm going to go into e-power mode right now and gas engine's about to turn off. And now we're, we're cruising with no gas. I, I like the way that this car works. It's very seamless. And it's also really funny that we still do have sport response. <laughs> it's like, this is awesome. Because it's like you can be economical, but then you could also be extra fast because of electricity. Yeah, because you also get the boost from the hybrid motors. Like this is a really good system. And two of the other options that I'm also most proud of, the carbon fiber floor mats, which they said was a very rare option. How they're, much do they cost? They're like $1,400 or something. They look so cool, but yours is already like kind of scuffed. Not scuffed. It's not it's scuffed, it's just dirty, dirty, yeah. But then the carbon fiber um, instruction manual. Yeah, that's that another is, very that is rare hilarious. one. That's That's like over a grand for that. Yep. <laughs> but it's also awesome that they do offer this kind of stuff because if you do have the money for it, you can do this. And then all of the other journalists in Toronto are going to get to drive this as well. So whoever writes for the Toronto Star who had that article featuring us, shout out Toronto Star, they're gonna review this in the Toronto Star too. Yeah, and there are actually a couple options that I feel like I may have omitted, but I have justification for that, Yuri. Do you wanna know what the options that I omitted are? Well, this doesn't have radar cruise and lane keep and 360 camera, which if I remember correctly, mine did have. Yes, those are the exact options that I omitted. Do you know why? Because I like them so much. No, because this is a driver's car. Oh. I've made the e-hybrid into a driver's car. That is the worst excuse ever. It's the best excuse. Okay, <laughs> honestly guys, I did get carried away by trying to get everything in carbon fiber and I kind of forgot. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wonder if you can add that after the fact. Like if you order that and you're like, oh. I don't think so. So, I forgot a 360 camera. Can I send it back or do that? I don't think it's like a carbon fiber owner's manual. Like you can get one of those after, but like adding sensors, I don't think you can do that. I would love to know <laughs> with me behind the wheel. Right now. Now this isn't a slow car because it's an e-hybrid. So Yuri, zero to 60 in about five seconds, send it. Not the way I'm doing it in full oh, electric. E-power. Full, full electric. Yeah. If I go any harder, then it's gonna turn on the gas engine. That's a cool sound though. And it's very smooth in the transition. Like there's no like, oh, the gas engine just kicked in. Do you think I can outrun this in a foot race and full electric? Uh, maybe for a couple feet. So apparently this has a full electric e-launch, so I'm gonna foot race that. And then when you hit the brakes, you do get some recharge. Yeah. How quickly did it fill up the battery when you ran out because you didn't plug it in to charge overnight? Yeah, so this is a plug-in hybrid, but it can also self-charge. So you can actually customize that through the infotainment in your vehicle settings. You can go into your hybrid mode and then change it from hybrid auto into e-charge. So in about half an hour, maybe an hour of driving, I got about 50% battery, which the gauge indicates is about 21 kilometers. Now this is rated at 27 kilometers, but if we have 50% and we're already at 21, I think this will actually significantly exceed the rated range. Which is nice. Yeah. All right. Cliche corner, automatic, full hybrid. Oh, let me know how it sends because I didn't actually send it. Ooh, this is nice. Well, it's got huge tires on it, so it's got mad grip. And the Continental recommended tire would be the Conti Sport Contact 5. This thing just feels like any other Cayenne. Yeah, it's enough sporty for the amount of hybrid that's in it. Yeah, like this handles it really, really well. And we do have the rear axle steering too. GTS, not the sweet spot. E-hybrid, sweet spot. Honestly, it kind of is. I actually have a lot more appreciation for this car after driving this. Okay, and this being a coupe, we haven't driven a coupe yet. That's why we spec one of these out. We've got the little cool spoiler on the back that goes up and down. And then when you go faster, it goes up even more. I think overall it looks cool. And then what we did is we made the spoiler red. Yes, I did. Mine was also <laughs> white with black behind it, but you can have some color there as well on the roof too. And seeing this in person, I have always said that the Cayenne Coupe is my favorite of the Coupe SUVs, and this confirms it. And then infotainment wise, uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Wireless, Sirius XM, all that stuff we usually have in all these ones that are all pretty much exactly the same. Yes. And you can also customize your sport exhaust system in there, which is cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually kind of hilarious that you have that. Honestly, just leave it on because it sounds really good. And then this being a coupe, if we fold everything down, we do have a bit less trunk room, but I feel like not too much less. And then as for back seat room, is it any less because it's a coupe? Uh, it is less, but I actually don't feel like it's less because I'm still very comfortable in here. Especially because of the houndstooth interior. Extra comfortable. And these seats up here are also very comfortable. They're bolstered just enough. Yeah, and then driving wise, I got the perfect Porsche steering wheel, like every single Porsche paddles. Everything about this is just nice, normal, good Porsche. And this is an eight-speed auto. It's actually not a PDK. 
It doesn't shift as fast as a PDK. It's smooth, but that also helps with its towing capacity of 7,700 pounds. Yeah, I'm just gonna floor it in hybrid mode. It, it took a while to downshift, boost, turbo, and then get into the right gear. It's not what we're used to from driving Porsche GT cars, but <laughs> GT I, cars. I get it. But now put it into Sport Plus and do the same thing. Much, much quicker. And exactly. if I click the Spore response button, yeah, ah, then it's right to it. Okay. Warp speed. They literally solve everything <laughs> exactly. with this mode button. Because you could be in e-power. Here, go to e-power, and now Spore response. Oh, wait, let me get into full electric. Okay. Takes a little while for it to kick down. Still realizes I'm all hyped up on that. There Mountain we go. <laughs> Better. That's as quick as I could expect it to be. So some things that I really don't like about your spec is that you did not get the cladding body matched and the front was not body matched either. Honestly, I think it probably would have looked even better with that, but uh, I'm okay with this. I, I really like the whole cladding and like the front and the bottom all matched up, but these wheels are like, I mean, for not the color match wheels, they're like pretty sick. I mean, they're like GT car they're, wheels. They're freaking awesome. Yes. but. I will say this, if you want better ride quality, you should probably get a smaller wheel because the ride quality is really good. We do have adaptive air suspension with this. It rides very well compared to other cars, but I can feel like having a little bit more sidewall would definitely help. And then even though we don't have the 360 camera, we do have sensors all the way around, which still will stop you, should stop you from bumping into stuff, but you know. Exactly. And then as for the gauge, it's the newer style with the analog in the middle and then the digital on the side, and we do have the green needle. So that's all cool, really easy to read. I am not offended by any of that. And I did get some carbon fiber on this interior. There is some gloss black. I tried to delete as much of it as I could, and I think I did a pretty good job. And if you guys want to be part of the next thing, who knows if another manufacturer will let us do this? Who knows if Porsche will ever let us do this again? Follow us on Instagram because this was really fun to do because you guys actually voted on the one that they, they built. Yeah, like actually 100%. This, this is real. <laughs> as disappointed as I was in all of you and, and your voting, <laughs> they legit stuck to it. They're like, whatever you vote on Instagram. Yeah. Unless it's Mamba Green with Mamba Green wheels. Yeah, because the Porsche exclusive manufacturer and the types of paints you can get, you can actually get their custom paints, but you can also get the custom paints plus as well. Okay, so they told us that they're, if you want to get a custom paint, they have like hundreds of approved colors already that aren't already listed on their thing. And then you can get crazy, crazy one. Like what's the metallic chameleon on the GT2 RS? That's like a $100,000 paint job. Yeah, least. something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. So like if you have enough money, you can do whatever you want. But, but it takes long. Yeah, yeah, and they have to approve it. They have to go through a whole testing process and stuff because like they don't want to paint a magnesium panel that's going to look different than a plastic panel. Or and whatever. it needs to like wear the same over time or something like that, which is actually like admirable that they do that and they're not just going to throw anything out the door. Yeah. So before we get to the price and before you go on the Porsche website and spec your own out, if you're looking for a ready to go Porsche, click the True Car link in the top right corner for discounted price offers if you live in the United States. So this one starts at $101,600 Canadian. And this one I specced out to $151,635. I think it's an awesome price for a GTS alternative, which is actually the new sweet spot. And I'm pleasantly surprised at how good the coupe looks in real life. I fully agree, and I think having a plug-in hybrid version of this car makes a lot of sense for a lot of people, and I really like this car now. And then let us know what we should spec out next in the comments below. Hey Porsche exclusive manufacturer, if you could just add one more option for me, that'd be lovely. Three, two, one, a passable visor. But the cup holders are all right. <laughs>